Hey everybody, what's happening? Son of a Silver Stacker here. In today's news, medic news and information for the 10th day of April 2022, I actually have two stories I want to cover today. One is the San Francisco Mint, and that will be the second story of today. And then the first one today, we're going to be talking about the LME. But first, let's go here to Jam Bullion so I can show you where the spot prices ended the week on Friday. So silver ended the week, 1957.01, silver at 2505, platinum at 995.13, under a thousand bucks. That's incredible. Palladium was up 2146 to 2494.25. The in stock silver, you're looking at 805. So not too much of a draw, just actually a build. Now, our next stop looks like it's a Google machine. And I looked up LME. And that is the, well, it's a really big place where they have the largest commodities exchange in the world. And that may change soon. So check this out. And this is really probably one of the most important um, changes in world history in the last 150, 200 years. This is kind of a big deal. So um things are changing uh rapidly here it says here exclusive trafigura i probably ruined that it's said to take zinc out of the lme system fueling concern sources say lme risks more squeezes uh, like the nickel one a couple weeks ago as metal stockpiles hit lowest in decades uh lme chief calls for scrutiny of private deals and nickel probes right he's talking about the derivatives market i i, I so that could be scary uh and we know that uh, well if you know who jim sinclair is uh, he's talking about over-the-counter derivatives will probably be the catalyst for um, a financial something or other, right? So that's kind of wild. It says they're exclusive. Uh, again, Trifigura set to take zinc out of the LME system. Fueling more concern. I think that's the same headline. LME, that's the London Metal Exchange, faces review over nickel trading chaos. That's five days ago. And it says here the exchange is probed over chaotic nickel market because... They are probably going to lose a lot of business. And I talked to you about that saying, you know, if I had um, been a trader in these commodities, specifically nickel, and the LME caused the market to stop, ceased all trading, and then only did paper trades. And when they did do paper trades, it can only drop like 15% per day. Um, well, you'd want to actually get into a system or a market that actually functioned properly, right? That wasn't so... Um, hamstring, so to speak. So lots of stuff going on here. Uh, let's see, LME's nickel route. Does the 145-year metals exchange have a future? And I don't think it does. I think it's going to, whoa, look at this. And that's from the South China Morning Post. And I imagine they are hungry um, in the Shanghai metals market to get all the business that the London ex uh, metal exchange does over a course of the year, right? So this is a very big deal. We could see a shift, a balance of power, if you will, from Europe, specifically um, the United Kingdom, to Asia. So here we go, folks. Now, this is an exclusive. This says here, Trafigura is set to take zinc out of the LME system, fueling concern, sources say. Well, if they're going to take it out, where are they going with it, right? And this is from Reuters, and this is by Eric Onstad, Pratima Desai. And that's the symbol of the company. It says here, this is out of London, April 7th. This is three days ago, commodity trader Trafigura commodity trader and other firms are moving to take large amounts of zinc out of the london metal exchange approved warehouses in asia sources familiar with the matter said feeling concerned about more problems at the exchange after chaotic nickel trading last month a spokesperson in response to requests for comment said we don't usually comment on commercial matters and it says here the lme is the world's biggest market for industrial metals and they suspended nickel trading on march 8 and canceled billions of dollars in trades after prices spiked by more than 50 percent in a matter of hours to a record above 110 or 100,000 a ton and what's interesting about this article uh, is that um uh, eric onstad and pratima pratima desai they mentioned that the lme is the world's biggest market for industrial metals but they don't mention that trafigura is the largest private commodity dealer in the world right so that's a really big deal and i think that's why people are having a lot of concern and that's um what they fail to mention right off in the article now let's go to the next stop and this is bloomberg it says here lme risks more squeeze squeezes as metal stockpiles hit lowest in decades now it says freely available inventories hit lowest since at least 1997 and here zinc inventories that's what the zinc consent is made out of right have plunged as trafigura books large volume so they're taking that out of the system and what happens if the united states mints cannot get those zinc rounds right to make those copper zinc plated pennies or whatever copper plated zinc pennies right 
It says here, London metal traders are still reeling from the historic squeeze in nickel a month ago, but they may not get much time to recover. Inventories across the exchanges, warehouses have dropped to perilously low levels. Think about that word, perilously, right? Peril, word peril. Raising the threat of further spikes in everything from aluminum to zinc. Yikes! And aluminum, that's a really big deal too, right? Our soda cans, soda pops, uh, part of, oh man, it's just... <laughs> Wow, yeah. The available stockpiles across six main contracts at the London Metal Exchange have plunged to the lowest on record in data going back to 1997. Goldman Sachs Group Incorporated warned that copper is sleepwalking towards a stock out. What does that even mean? We're out of stock? Take it about. While freely available zinc inventory shrank by more than 60% in less than three weeks as Trafigura Group booked out large volumes. Nickel itself remains at risk of further turmoil. And you can see that here looking at this chart. Look at this. So that's the LME uh, copper inventories, aluminum, zinc, lead, tin, and nickel. And look at the nickel down here. I imagine that is the um, uh, warrant uh, copper. And these are the nickel. I mean, it's just incredible. What a What a chart. And I'll leave a link in the description um, for this uh, particular uh, story. In fact, I'll leave a link in the description of all of these articles. A lot of stuff going on here, and I think the balance of power is shifting. And now this is LME Chief calls for scrutiny over those private deals in nickel probes. That's a scary picture. Now, UK regulators are quizzing the LME over what went wrong in the London or in the nickel market last month, but in the exchange's chief, but the exchange's chief said. Uh, has said the core problem lies with the trades he cannot see. Hmm. And this may be them targeting those derivatives, right? Um, and that's basically what over-the-counter derivatives are. They are trades that are not regulated. We've talked about that before. The LME has launched its own independent review, as have the Financial Conduct Authority and the Bank of England, which monitors its clearinghouse. The review follows a huge spike in nickel prices that led to the exchange suspending trade in the metal for eight days, sparking a deep anger at the LME's handling of the event. Absolutely. And that's why we're seeing people probably um, trafigura take those metals out, right? But the exchange said it did not know the vast scale of the nickel bet that sparked the disruption before the price erupted because of large positions placed privately through banks. Without addressing the bets that can build up behind closed doors, the market is vulnerable to further shocks, it warned. And they've been doing this for years and years and years and years, and only now it's a problem? Yeah, I don't know. It's absolutely right. We go and review all of the activity so that we're satisfied. We can uh, account for everything that has happened. Matthew Chamberlain, chief executive of the LME, said in an interview, uh, the price of nickel rose 250% in the lead up to March 8 when the LME halted contracts at a race day day's worth of trades after Russia's invasion of Ukraine sparked fears about a supply shortages for metal crucial to the construction of uh, electric vehicles. Now, um, I think it does say uh, derivatives in here right there, uh, but they will also need to pull apart a market where the world's top 12 investment banks made the bulk of the $6 billion in revenues in the first half of last year by selling derivatives and acting as intermediary, intermediaries, providing credit according to the coalition Greenwich. Now, here what this is. Now, this is over-the-counter derivative from Investopedia, and I hope you're following along. Lots on pack here. Over-the-counter derivatives is a financial contract that does not make trade on an asset exchange and which can be tailored to each party's need. Now, here we go. These are the key takeaways. An over-the-counter derivative, OTC, is a financial contract that is arranged between two counterparties, but with minimal intermediation or regulation. There it is, folks. So, no standardized terms. They're not listed as an asset exchange right? Not listed on an asset exchange. That's LME. As an example, a forward uh, and futures contract both can represent the same underlying, but the former is OTC, while the latter is exchange traded. So a forward and futures contract, right? There you go. Um, wow. So we are definitely in new territory. And um, there's a guy named um, Jim Sinclair, I think. And uh, he's at JS Mindset. And he thinks that this is the catalyst for a financial collapse, is this over-the-counter derivative action that are not uh, regulated, right? So unregulated financial products. Yeah, whoops. Now, next thing I want to talk about today, and there's a lot to unpack here, and I just want to make it really quick. This is the United States Mint website, and this is the San Francisco Mint's uh, obligations here. And this is 17 items for 2020 right here. Um, now, we start, we start here. In January, like we do every year, and let's go through this product schedule because I'm going to make the argument that after a certain point during the summer, the San Francisco Mint will be shutting down for the rest of the year, if not indefinitely. And this is why. Now, I've only got San Francisco selected. There are 17 
items found and we're going to go straight over here to april 10 and we've just passed april 10 so that's the proof set that's coming out that's come out already the next two things are going to be coming out is a san francisco american innovation coin proof set so they've got that locked in for san francisco and i imagine there's only going to be a finite of those available same with the proof set for 2022 once they do shut down the mint i believe that will be it for the silver proof set the um, or at least for the american women quarter silver proof set the american women clad proof set but more importantly uh, i believe the proof set from 2022 will not have a high mintage because of the uh, looming shutdown at the San Francisco Mint. So look at this. Okay, talked about this already. The San Francisco American Innovation Coins set, match, done, complete, right? By June 7, halfway through the year, right? Look at this. Um, this is the multi that's, you know, they probably have a lot of these already. Well, I don't even want to go into that just yet. Uh, here we go. Silver proof set. So they've already got that locked in halfway into the year, correct? Um, also, look at this. This is the American Eagle one ounce silver proof coin probably shortly after that from San Francisco, if if they even mint it at all. Now we have more quarters, right? Multi-DPS, and that is the um, uh, 40 coin roll from San Francisco. They could have already made those already, right? Because we know the dies are already made. So all of these quarter products, we probably don't even need to think about these products on the mint schedule because they've already probably minted them, yeah? Now, we're already down here. See, oh, Nino Otero Warren, Anna Mae Wong. We can take those right off. Now, the next one they, ha they have here at the San Francisco Mint, another obligation, is the American Innovation $1 coin reverse proof set. And that could be early fall um, and a as a release, uh, shortly after summer ends. And look at this. This is the limited edition 2022 silver proof set. This is their last obligation because we know the United States Mint took off the ornaments that were supposed to be from San Francisco. And they also took off the proofs Morgan and Peace dollars from 2022 that was at the end of the schedule. So there you go. That is my theory because check this out. The silver proof set, all they, look, they're, they've replaced the San Francisco American Silver Eagle with a West Point American Silver Eagle, right? So bam, there lifts the obligations on the San Francisco Mint for that particular issue. And not only that, they've already made, okay, the other items, the quarters and the half dollars and the uh, the cent, the nickel and the dime. So really, all they need to do is just piece it together with the proof that comes out on uh, what is it, on the fourteenth here, on the fourteenth right here. Uh, no, 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 that's not even it because I don't even have that schedule up. My bad. But really, um, the point is, all these products could already be made, and the San Francisco Mint could be shutting down easily uh, by July or August of this year and then be, you know, three, four, five, six months um, out of action. And, uh, and that would make the San Francisco products from 2022 very highly desirable, in my opinion. Now, um, I probably, I should wrap this up now. I got probably 13 minutes and there we go. Now, this is from Proverbs 8, 10 through 11. And I think this is important because look at all that jewelry and wealth and stuff, right? Now it says here, take my instruction instead of silver and knowledge rather than choice gold, for wisdom is better than jewels, and all that you may desire cannot compare with her of uh, that wisdom. Now I think what this means to me is that you put instruction, knowledge, and wisdom before all of this. You make that your priority and not this your priority, although this can be something that you acquire uh, in life without, you know, worry, I don't think. Um, as long as you make this your priority. So there it is, folks. I want to thank you all for watching. Thanks for dropping by. Don't forget to hit that like button. And if you do like what you're going to see, please subscribe to the channel. It's free. Son of a Silver Stacker, out.